Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the PGA Tour uh, slate for this weekend. Uh, actually starts tomorrow. And we're going to do a lineup build here, and if it gets to be too long or too complicated or whatever, I apologize, but this is, this is actually what interests me. Uh, not getting into the weeds necessarily about which golfer I like more or less. All of that is just already factored into projections and the models and things like that. What I want to do here is, is, is just try to focus on not who the good plays are, but, but who I'm playing. And we're going to do some sim work. We're going to use uh, Saber Sim to build different types of lineups. And then we're going to enter them into both the, uh, the, the pitch and putt, which is the big, you know, big GPP, uh, and also uh, the, the single entry and the, uh, and the signature hole. And the reason why I'm doing this, again, is... Uh, I'm trying to focus my videos as much as I can on process. And it's against my little crusade that I'm on or whatever, that I just believe that almost no site at all teaches people actually how to play and how to win. Give you good plays, they give you kind of ideas, but even you give me 12 good plays, that doesn't necessarily mean that I know exactly what to do with them. You know? So we're going to focus on this and we're, and I'm going to continue to try to get better myself which is my selfish reason for doing this. And hopefully you guys learned something. And it's a, uh, it is also a way to promote some of the stuff we have going on on true DFS. Cause we are going to be using the true DFS uh, projections to do this. And we're also going to be using Saber Sim to build, but again, ho hopefully this is not as important to tell you guys who you're playing this week, but a process video to come back to if you want uh, later on. So this, these are the Saberson projections, but what we're going to do is we're going to use our own. Um, so let's let's upload what we have, at least for now. And these are going to change, which is why I don't mind, um, why I don't mind uh, uploading them. Just to kind of show you where this comes from. Okay, so we replace the Saberson projections with, with ours. And when I mean ours, I mean... Uh, this is my interpretation of the industry, sort of. I, mean, I, I look at a lot of different models and I, I, a lot of different sites and I back test almost all of them for accuracy. And yes, uh, back testing fantasy points for accuracy is very, very specious to say the least, um, but it's better than nothing. And I also back test the ownership projections for accuracy, which is very important. And that is very measurable. I mean, it's hard to measure how good a projection is, especially a median projection, which number one, for, for one, we don't even care what the median projection is. We're looking for a ceiling anyway. And also if I project a guy at hundred and, and he put up 120, I mean, does that mean I'm right? You know what I mean? It, it, it's very difficult, but with ownership, which is a very important thing to have to project, we can actually predict how they did uh, relative to what these guys were actually owned. And when we get into contest sims and, and things like that, uh, projecting ownership is a really, really big deal. Like projecting what other people are going to play is a really, really big deal. So that I've done a lot of work on. And so I, I basically aggregate all the ownership projections that I can find that I've tested. And I do kind of like a weight, not weighted average. I just kind of weight the, the, the more accurate ones a little bit higher. And so what you have here is kind of like the end results, which... I, mean, I don't want to get into swinging or whatever it is, but this is of all the back tested ownership projections I've seen. My kind of aggregate of all of them tweaked is the most accurate. And for those of you that are in statistics, that's not particularly surprising. You know, that's the way the law of large numbers works in a way that the more samples, the more likely it's going to converge on reality. Um, but anyway, uh, that's what you're looking at here. Now, when it comes to hand building, if you're interested, I mean, you could try to hand build this way, uh, but it's much more interesting to try to use Saber Sim. So like what you would do if you're trying to hand build, you could probably, well, you could sort them by point per dollar and just see if you can't just play the top six guys. And you might actually be able to do that. I'll just show you, it's actually pretty fun. Let's pull up the, um, uh, the, uh, the DraftKings lobby. And I don't think they're going to get too mad at me for that because um, 
because I'm not actually playing this, but let's just see. So I was just going to really just sort by points per dollar. Let's see if we can play this exact lineup. So it'd be Cole, Duncan, Scheffler. Let's see. So Cole, Duncan, Scheffler. I won't be able to do this easily, I think. Well, and then Jaeger. And then Shank. I'm just literally sorting by point per dollar. And then ooh, and then we then we run into an issue here. Then it would be we could play Jake Knapp, but then we'd leave money on the table. So we can go down and play Alex Smalley at seventy three hundred if we want. So that's one. So that's one thing you can do with the tools you have is just use the projection, sort by point of dollar, play this. And maybe this isn't that bad, you know, whatever. But this is not particularly interesting. To, you, know, you could use the tools to build this way, but that's, you know, whatever. Anyway, let's see if we can build like a whole portfolio of lines, which is, that is what's interesting to me, like how they kind of work together, how uh, we're building for ceiling and things like that, and how we're specifically entering the contests that we're, we can enter. All right. So let's uh oh I put this already here built to. So let's uh just run these run this build and we're going to start with the 150 max default. And all we're doing is building five thousand lineups. All right, we're putting 150 because that means it's gonna display the top 150, but we're building five thousand. And the rest we're just kind of letting the the default saber sim uh uh, settings for GPP 150 max kind of take over here. Um, but what building lineups is all about is not just building the top whatever and entering the top 150. Okay. Because you have to figure out what the top means. Are we going to be rating them by, by top projected points? Now, if you do that, remember now you're talking about the median outcome. Um, Maybe, maybe we don't want the median outcome. Maybe some golfers have a different range of distributions where you have two guys with the same median outcome, but one guy is more inclined to be boom or bust, you know, be able to really smash. The other one is more of a kind of a consistent guy. Uh, do you want to play the consistent guy? Or do you want to play the, 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 the boom or bust guy? Or do you want to play, if you want to play six golfers, Maybe you play three boomer bus guys and three uh, consistent guys that all have the same medians. Okay. So just to say rank them by projected lineups, projected points is not particularly interesting. Um, but what we do here is we have this group of 5,000 and then we're going to rank them by different metrics. So it's almost done and I'll show you what, what we're talking about here. Okay, so what are we looking at? So what we're looking at is the top 150 lineups that are rated in a certain way. We're not even going to see what the exposures are yet. All right, we'll just... It's being rated by the by Saber score, what's called golf main 10K to 50K. So it's going to presume there's 10K to 50K players in, and it has settings that are kind of based on this. So if you want, you could click on the I and see what that that formula is um, without getting too deep into the weeds. Um, you, this is a relatively aggressive, but not overly so way of, of rating, of rating golfers, of rating lineups. So what you could do, I mean, if you want, you know, you could just put these 150 in. Uh, and I actually don't think that that's that bad. I mean, certainly better than just, you know, doing your traditional optimizer. And then you'd be getting 90% Scheffler, 70% Cole, 40% Jaeger, whatever it is. Um, now, the other thing you could do is you could say at this point, oh, I don't want Scotty Scheffler. I don't want 90% of him. So you could manually adjust this down and it'll automatically pull from the 5,000 lineups and re-rate them. But they're re-rating them by this same metric here. So one bit of advice that I've gotten from Jordan from Saberson, which makes sense, 
is that if you want to get a little more diversification, like spread your risk out a little bit more, um, but not sacrifice that much upside, is you, you change the min uniques setting here so that we are going to require that each lineup is different from another by more than just one golfer. So how much to do? Well, what I've heard as a good guideline is you keep on pressing it three, four, until it won't let you anymore, okay? Um, and then what you do is you could go back to min uniques three and use that. Now, I've also heard argue that you should even go back a little bit more and go to min uniques two, right? But this is a pretty good start. So again, to summarize where we've been, right? We put the projections in, we've ran lineups based on this golf main setup. Uh, and now uh, our top 150 are now being required to have a min uniques of three, okay? So as you'll see, you know, the, the, the ownership has kind of crunched and condensed a little bit when we've done this. So you could, I mean, honestly, if you want, you could fire this and put this up there right now. The other thing you could do, if you had a particular take on a golfer, you could up you could upgrade them. Like if you know you looked at Bobby in my my uh, video, or you have your own take and say, "Dude, I love Ben Griffin," or whatever. You could certainly you know put him in, you know move his exposure up and down, up or down. I don't do that. Um, I, I rely on the numbers and you know the subsequent lineup building much that much more, especially for golf. Um, than my own instincts so i'm probably not going to do anything like that like just oh i just really feel like having 20 percent ben griffin now i think it's healthy to do that if you have a you listen you have a take and you want to sweat you want to root i don't think it's that bad i just don't um but the next thing i think that we should really do is a contest simulation uh, simulation and what that is again is all we're doing is going to re-rank these five thousand lineups in another way we're going to give a different set of 150. And what we're going to be getting, ostensibly, is the best 150 that at the best in the specific contest that we're entering. So what does that mean? It means that we're playing, say, the pitch and putt. And I already saved these contest sim settings here. But let's we'll, we'll do it again. All right, I'll show you. Uh, as a matter of fact, to show you what we're going to do, let's, uh, let's save these to the contest for now. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. Because I want this box to come up. So these are the three tournaments we're playing. We're playing the driver, the pitch and putt, and the signature hole. And what you want to do is right-click each contest and put add contest in. And what it'll do, it'll automatically fill in this information. Uh, it'll, you know, uh, it'll say how many entrants are rating to be in this tournament, what the payout is. Because what it's trying to do is create this, this assumed field of lineups to compare your lineups against to create the best lineups that behave the best against your fields, your opponents, uh, when it comes to leverage and things like that. Um, so for each tournament, you want to right-click and save um, uh, uh, these settings. Do it again. You can duplicate. That's fine. And the one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind is this setting here where it said field lineups. So what this is, you know, look at this, is that, um, is that it's going to be basing its field on the Sabre Sim ownership. Okay. So, the field of lineups that we're comparing ourselves to, it's based on what Saberson feels the field is going to do. Okay. Um, now that does require a little bit of leap of faith, right? Because if, if you're wrong on that, then you're comparing it to the wrong thing. But I think Saberson does a good job of that. What you could do if you want, and if you believe that you're, field of lineups or you, what you what your what your own projections lead you to believe or better then what you can just do is this is kind of an interesting thing interesting tweak is change this to build one see remember we just made a build of 5000 lineups based on our projections 
and our ownership projections. And so what we might want to do is compare our set of lineups to ourselves, if that makes any sense, you know? Um, so it really depends on what you want to do. For now, what we're going to do is we are going to actually use the build one as the field of lineups, okay? Um, for the pitching button. The reason why is can we built it based on 150 max stuff? I think I want to leave the Saber Sim one for signature hole and for driver um, because we didn't build, you know, because we don't want lineups specifically built for the 150 to be the comparative field, right? When you're dealing with the signature hole or the driver. So we're going to keep those the same. So let's uh, run these. And what we're doing now is we're running the contest sims. And again, all we're doing is figuring out ways to rank these 5,000 lineups. You know, you have 5,000 to choose from. We're not going to rate them by the top 150 projected points. We're not going to rate them anymore just by the top projected uh, golf main 10K to 50K setting, which we talked about before. And we're not just going to use that even with Min Uniques 3. Now what we're doing is we are comparing our lineups to the actual field of lineups we're competing against and ranking them based on their projected risk-adjusted ROI against that whole field. So let's see when this stops, and I'll show you how to look at that. Usually it's not quite this long. Actually, golf does take a little bit. Now, I was going to say that I'm just going to put you guys on pause and come back. But once I do that, once I hit pause, I promise you it's going to finish. So I'll give you five seconds. And if not, I'll put you on pause until it finishes. All right, I'll put you on pause until it finishes. Okay, so it only took a couple more seconds. So now what we're going to do is re-rate these, rank these by each of these contests. So we're going to look at the pitch and putt 200K. That's the 150 max. And we're going to sort by risk adjusted ROI. So now we have 150. Let's go back first to Min Unique's one. Okay. And these 150 perform the best on a risk adjusted ROI perspective against that big field of 5,000 that we created before, okay? So now let's go do that thing again with the Min Uniques. We'll go Min Uniques 2, Min Uniques 3, Min Uniques 4, no good. So let's go back to Min Uniques 3, all right? And, uh, and this is where you legit could stop, you know? And, and I usually stop, like, literally right about here. Um, I just kind of go with this and, and kind of let it roll. Um, so let's put that in the pitch and putt. Let's go back to the signature hole. Uh, signature hole. Rate by risk adjusted ROI there. And we're only playing one lineup, so we could just put the top one in. And it's important to see what you're doing here. So we're putting it in by unique rank, so it is putting the top ranked one in. And then we go to the 30K single entry. It's actually the same lineup, that's all right. And that's interesting. So that's two weeks in a row I'm getting Grace and freaking Sig here. All right, this is what it is. Kind of answer it this way. make sure that we this so it's not particularly sexy i mean it's not particularly based on anything you know except knowing how to use the tools at your disposal um and yeah if you want if you don't like any of this just feel free to, to tweak it whatever whatever you want but this is my process and this is what i'm probably going to do once everything updates or whatever it is. Um, and uh, I guess that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.